Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, gents. Hello, guys. Welcome to this webinar session. Uh, we have the privilege today to hear Jens, an expert trader, talk to us about the US Open, how can we approach trading at this time. And I'm sure you're going to gain a lot of value after, uh, after Jen explains you what he needs relevant uh, as information for you to know. So I will pass it on to Jens. Hello, Jens. Hello, Theo. Okay, I can okay. hear you clearly. Uh, Perfect. Shall I um, share my screen? Yes, go for it. Okay, so hello, everyone. Uh, nice to be here today. Um, let me just see. Okay, perfect. So there's the chat box. If you have any questions, this is where you can ask all your questions. Um, and uh, so today we wanna we wanna dig into um, not a special topic, but we really wanna um, go for it. So we really wanna wanna see um, how to prepare for U.S. market opening. And um, probably this is the thing we would probably um, um, not just prepare for it. I've prepared something already and I will guide you through my daily routine, um, how I um, spot potential plays for the day, especially for US equities where my main focus is on. Um, but also it's possible that we will have a trade today. So um, it's, uh, um, uh, so what we get to see today is, is real. So this is, this is like real action potentially. So, um, and it's very important since we will um, show the risk disclaimer at the end, I will already tell you right now here at the beginning, um, if we will make a trade, then um, please understand uh, that this is for educational purposes only. So it's not that um, you should take the trade yourself, but if you come to the conclusion that you want to take the trade too, for whatever reason, um, you are responsible for all the risks involved. So you can um, um, make all the money potentially, but also you can also lose all the money um, 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 you're, you're risking here. So this is um, something I'd like to, to emphasize right at the beginning. Um, and um, yeah, we do this together with, with Admiral. So uh, the broker behind this, this um, uh, series here, so FX and CFD broker for, for um, over 20 years in the business, um, having established a name as one of the leaders in the FX and, and CFD industry, fully licensed, fully regulated by the SISIC, by the FCA, by the ASIC in Australia. I think there's a new regulation from last year now in Jordan. What all this means for your trading, please feel free to check out the website, admiralmarkets.com. Um, right now, there's also an offering in terms of uh, reduced spreads when it comes to DAX trading, S&P trading, um, NASDAQ trading. Um, so this is also something we want to have a look at because we need to know the overall picture, something uh, you should be aware of that right now you are probably, um, 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 or you not just probably, but you have the chance to profit from um, to, to have the chance to, to profit from, from special trading conditions. All information is available on the website. And um, so fully regulated broker, one world, one broker in this context. I'd also like here to share um, one slide um, on the uh, fractional shares offering. This is exactly what I want to talk about uh, because today it's not just Netflix we want to have a look at, but also we want to um, have a look at Tesla in this context. So if you are interested in trading um, 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 stocks in general, there's a great way to do that. But um, sometimes it's probably um, difficult to, to, to pay the full price. So for a stock which is close to 800 USD per share, you might probably say, I want to start a little smaller, 200 euros or something like that. So that means that you're then buying, if you, if you plan to, to long a Tesla share, uh, that you can only buy a fraction of the share, 0.25, but it's possible with Admirals also here, all in information on the um, um, website being available. And um, so first of all, I, what I want to do is I want to here go into the trading station. So this is, this is my layout um, I'm using. 
Um, and uh, what you what you can see here is that I'm not just looking at a five minute chart. This is where where my trading takes place, but also I have here a one hourly chart and I have here a daily chart. And as you can see here, by the way, already um, you can you can see that um, I have. Oh well, we can leave it that way then. Um, I have already Netflix open, and the question you might have is probably, um, why do I focus on 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 uh, Netflix today? So why is um, Netflix of interest for me today? You probably have seen it yesterday after hours there were earnings which were released um but this is something let me just um go over here so this is usually where my where my trading starts so i will guide you now through the whole routine um how i prepare already for the trading week so that's um a tweet or respectively an overview of the upcoming earnings um which I usually post on my Twitter account every uh, Saturday. And I, I tweet it for my followers, but it's also to, to give me an overview of where do we stand um, 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 earnings wise and, and which, which, which companies um, 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 will report earnings. So to have already some names in mind, I will then look for, for further information to get and, 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 and earnings which will be released. And as you can see here, so Tuesday, so today is Wednesday, um, Tuesday after Klaus, it was um, Netflix who was um, 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 reporting numbers. Very important because the last two reports, um, you probably have also seen that, um, were well below expectation. Last time, in fact, they, um, they really um, um, delivered a shocker. Um, so with um, paid, paid um, 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 streaming net change of being negative for the first time, I think in a decade, and then going for saying that we expect to lose 2 million um, paid streaming customers um, in the next quarter. So that was a very low bar to, 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 to jump over. And in fact, they um, came in better than expected and this is one of the reasons why we'll potentially look for for um, 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 a bullish setup, let's say, for today. Um, but this is the first thing. So first of all, you need to make sure that you understand which earnings will come up and um, why a potential stock well, that it could trigger um, um, a heavier reaction on the upside, on the downside, um, elevated interest from as institutional market participants, and thus we see already, not just after hours, but also pre-market, we see elevated volume coming in. So today it's Netflix. Um, I can already say tomorrow it will be Tesla because after hours today, Tesla will deliver earnings. And thus you will see that Tesla will be quite um, 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 heavily traded. There's also other companies, United, for example, here, United Airlines. You also see Snap, for example, tomorrow then after hours. So on Friday, you already have a potential um, um, stock in play here. Um, you have also on Friday, into the weekly close Twitter, for example. But this is already a very good overview and it helps you to already prepare your chart. So look, look at the charts, look at which um, mode we are currently in, is the stock beaten down? Is it very extended on the upside? And then um, take it from there, waiting for the news event to happen and then see whether it triggers some kind of interest and some kind of, of, of volatility. So now I already mentioned pre-market, um, and before I, I would show you where to get this information, what I'd like to do um, is I want to show you here my Excel file I prepare every day um, once I, I look for, 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 for stocks. So today, I, it's not over, um, 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 overwhelming in terms of, of um, 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 stocks I watch. <clears throat> so today, it's only Netflix. Um, and in fact, it's really only Netflix. And I'm really happy about this because um, um, thus we can fully focus here on the process of how to prepare um, for a stock. Usually what I look for is two to three stocks. I will um, 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 then watch for the day based on trigger events. And that could possibly happen in fact next week. So I already have somehow Tesla in mind because of the after hours earnings we will um, um, see. But today I will fully focus on Netflix due to the pre-market action we got to see. You can see here, so it's the ticker symbol that it's green, that's no surprise. So this is already a first sign for me how I'm biased for the stock. So um, after the earnings reaction yesterday and the, the potential gap up, which we will see here and the pre-market, which is already I'm, I'm showing, you can see that green in this case um, means that I'm more bullish for the stock. But I also know when I don't want to be bullish anymore. Um, this is 
after we, we drop back below the breakout region around 205. So if we test 205, fine, but if we drop 205, this is the breakout region, as we will see in a few seconds when we, we look at the chart, I'm, I'm out here. So then I have um, three levels I'm watching on the downside, respectively on the upside, so support and resistance lines. And here you can see um, it's 210, 207, 205. Why this is also, we will go through the chart in a few seconds. Um, we have on the upside 215, 219, 225. This is something which will potentially surprise you. I will go already into the chart probably because the last time uh, we traded here in this area, this is around one quarter ago. So the last time, in fact, was um, that we traded in the current area around 220, 210, 220. Um, probably not, yeah. 210 to 210 to 210 to 20. That was after um, the earnings release for the first quarter in 2022. That was um, um, a release we got to see here on the, was it 19th, 18th, somehow mid, mid of April. Um, and now we're trading here again. And now you might wonder, okay, where do these levels come from? Does he really look three months into the past and thinks that these levels are of interest? No, it's not the case. These are the levels I'm watching in the pre-market and where you need to get your hands on and, and something you, you need to, to have. In fact, in addition here to your charting tool, you use with, with Admirals, with the MetaTrader. So this is in fact our trading tool. This is where we enter the trades, but for research purposes, I'm also using Trading view. You've probably heard about this before. And it's not just that I'm looking at trading view, but I also bought, and this is something in addition you need to, to, to um, have if you want to be active in, in um, um, actively trading, day trading, a stock and US equity stock. You also need to, to get your hands on data from the NASDAQ, respectively from the NYSE here. So to know um, where volume comes in and to have a clear overview of which volume at which level is traded. And then, so you can see here already, this is a 30 minute chart and you can see here, this is potentially the breakout and you can already see it's not black here in the background, but there's also some blue, some orange, and this blue and orange, this is the so-called after hours, respectively, the pre-market, um, which is currently taking place. So normally you don't see um, the market being very active in the pre-market if there's no, let's say, news catalyst happening. So um, you probably have also heard that potential charting um, levels in, in your chart um, are more significant than others. And the reason why they are more significant is because there's a higher interest. And how do you measure interest in a stock, for example? You measure it with looking at the volume, which is traded at um, a respective level. So that means um, if you see elevated volume in the after hours, after an earnings release, respectively in the pre-market, um, and certain levels to, to occur in the chart, obviously where the, 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 the stock reacts um, um, against, well, then it's a clear sign that this is a level which is of interest, obviously, also, even though um, you might not see it in your chart, which only covers, covers the spot market. So only the, the time between um, 3.30, in this case, German time, so 9.30 um, Eastern time till uh, the end of the trading day, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so coming back here, so we, now we can see that after yesterday, um, earnings were released. We will look at this in a few seconds. Then at the news itself, you see a pop on the upside, and then the market started to consolidate here between around 215 and 219. And now we are rolling over a little, so we are dropping the this this blue line here. So this blue line, by the way, is the so-called volume weighted average price. So that's also one reason why I need the volume to be displayed and and have clear volume data. So to, to be able to display this volume weighted average price, the volume weighted average price, the name itself um, is already um, I'm explaining what this is. So it shows you how much volume was traded on a specific price and then drawing here in this context um, an, an, an average respect, yeah, a moving average to some extent. Um, it's not a real moving average, but it's an average price, which is displayed with this with this blue line. This um, orange line you can see here, this is the two-day um, so Something we can, we can really, in fact, take out for today. This is something which is of interest in the next day. Um, it shows you the average volume price, which was not just paid today, but it was also um, where the most volume was traded the day before. And then combining these two lines, and right now you can see 
um, that obviously given yesterday's action, so it hasn't yet moved that strongly, even though there's a clear drift at the end here on the upside showing that the market is obviously expect or um, I'm, I'm accepting higher prices um, volume wise, but we'll take it out today because it's not um, um, of, of, of use for us. And um, so wait, what you can see is 215, 219, 225. Surprise, surprise, these are the levels which I'm currently looking at um, because 215 was the lower end. So right now we are dropping this level. In fact, we are trading already at 210, around 210 here, as you can see. Um, and um, so that's the reason where these resistance lines come from. So obviously it's very important to, to have this pre-market action um, um, on your agenda because these levels um, are, some sometime most of the time in fact accepted then from market participants so the next slide is the inflection um in this case i made it with 215 it's some um, a rough line in the sand for me in my case i'm saying well if we trade above that level i'm focused on the long side if we can't really make it above that level and hold that level well i'm not that interested on the long side anymore um if we drop it if we hold below in fact i consider the short side even though right now I'm not that short BS, but I'm more focused on probably a longer term play in Netflix if we can hold the gap. But this is something we will focus on in a, um, a little later stage here. First of all, we want to we want to focus on how to prepare for the trading day. So for for the market to open. So then I have the news. What what is uh, the reason that um, um, the stock is hot for today. So why is it in play? And um, you can see here, we had earnings yesterday. EPS, obviously important, 320 to 298, um, better than expected. We have the revenue, which is coming in in line, 798 um, to 7.97, sorry, uh, 797 7, um, against 804 expected. So in line. Um, but and you can already see it here. I have it in red. This is the key component of today's earnings release. It's in fact telling us that um, numbers which were expected to come in lower than expected in terms of um, streaming paid change, minus 2 million, came in above what the market expected, in fact. Um, that's positive, even though negative, longer term. So if I'm an investor, I'd really not want to be long um, Netflix anymore. So I think we have short term sharp bounce potential. I think we were probably we can make it back up to 250, probably 280. Um, um, if especially the overall market improves and if especially now we are breaking higher due to a dovish Fed or something um, um, next week with a, with a, with a, a Fed rate decision and a, a lower um, um, than expected rate hike cycle, which we will enter in the last three meetings of the year. Um, but all in all, you can already see they are losing steam. So they, this is not a growth story anymore. There's lots of competition in this um, I'm streaming space now with Disney Plus, with Hulu, with um, who else do we have? Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, certainly. Um, and uh, so they're, they're losing track. Then there's recession fears, there's inflation fears. So prices for daily um, goods of consumption are rising. And you really um, wonder, do I need, let's say, simply speaking, um, three streaming services here um, um, to, 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 to um, 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 having booked three streaming services, or is it probably better to have just one, in this case, let's say Amazon Prime or Disney Plus, because I have kids and um, let, let's, uh, let, let them watch something like Mickey Mouse or something like that and Netflix, well, nice, but I'm not such a fan of their series anymore, whatever it might be. Um, this is one of potentially the reasons why um, the number of subscribers is dropping in this case. Um, still less than expected, which is then after seeing the, the stock being thus beaten down, as you can see here. So coming in fact from nearly 700 USD per share from November 21, now trading as low as what, what, we were 170 or something. Yeah. On the, on the downside, to the lower range, 165. So it's down more than 70%, very beaten down. Uh, and now they are gaining some traction with gapping out of this range, this consolidation area here on the upside, on this lower um, 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 or, or less bearish expected a number in terms of, of um, um, streaming streaming paid net change. So then we have um, um, the, the, the forecast for the EPS. So the guidance for the next quarter, lower than expected. Now you have the revenue, which comes in 784 billion against 8.1, also lower. Not really good if you guide lower um, than expected. And also if you have streaming paid net change, 
of 1 million expected for the third quarter, um, while the street, your Wall Street analysts expect 1.8 million, this is also lower. So all in all, it's a very mixed data set, even though it's very beaten down, it was a low bar to, to, um, 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 to, 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 um, to jump over, let's say. And this is the main driver for the current bullishness. So in fact, the more interesting question is right now, in my opinion, can we hold this gap, which we're currently seeing, um, um, which occurs? So now you might wonder, why do I see a gap? So looking here, I don't have any data right now. So this is a closing price of around 200 and it's not a gap right now because for, for a gap, we need to have a price outside of the, of the trading range of before. So where do I see the gap? And this is now where the pre-market comes into play. So as you can see here, I have in this case, oh, by the way, this is so there's something missing. So this is the gap. Um, it's 4.55, that was the last time. So we have to update this, by the way. So then I look at the average daily trading volume and I look at the pre-market volume. And these, in fact, three are key parameters for my trading um, to decide whether the stock is hot for me or it's not. So what you wanna see is, I wanna see a gap of three, probably more than that percent on the upside, on the downside, depending on the news. So in case of a bullish release here or better, better than expected, um, you wanna see a gap up. If you have a worse than expected last quarter, for example, on Netflix, a catastrophe in terms of um, streaming paid net change um, um, guidance of minus 2 million, you see a gap down. And then you have a look here at the average daily trading volume, which is traded at the stock. And then you wanna see the pre-market volume and you wanna have a ratio in this case of minimum 10% in the pre-market being traded already from the average daily trading volume. So which means if you have an average daily trading volume in this case here of 1.4, um, I'm, I'm sorry, 14, 15 million, you wanna see pre-market minimum 1.4 to 1.5 million being traded because this is showing that there is a high level of interest in the stock given from institutional market participants, especially, but also from retail traders um, who have access to pre-market trading in this case. And also it's underlying, uh, under, underlining here in this case that the levels you identified in the pre-market especially have um, um, a higher significance than they would have if there was no volume attached to this. And now your question will be, okay, where do I get these numbers from? So. I mean, this is obviously something I do not find here um, um, in the in the meta trader because this is only focusing on spot trading. Um, and therefore, we will head over to a website where this is completely free. We go to the so-called pre-market screener. I will share here, by the way, the link in the chat box. We go to the to the pre-market screener. I call it um, PMKT screener from Market Watch, which is completely free. And obviously, you can see. Oh, by the way, now we are we are coming down. Obviously, so we are we are losing we are losing some some um, 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 we are losing here some some of the gains pre market so around two ten here. But as you can see, so sometimes you will find the stock already here in so called leader section, respectively in the laggard section. So you now you can see here the most active. You have Netflix, the most active stock in the pre market, followed by Tesla after hours earnings. You see volume, which means how much volume was done in the pre-market so far, 1.73 million, and you see a gap of 4.1, yeah, 4.1% in this case. So these are numbers I will here type in. This is, by the way, very important when it comes um, after the trading day and having made a trade potentially. This is then the question, um, did the parameters fit my criteria or did I, for example, trade a stock which hasn't fulfilled my criteria. Could be that for whatever reason, I'm trading Tesla today. Um, as you can see here, so it's nine, nearly 1 million shares being traded. Let's, let's type in the 1 million here. But on average, you have nearly 31 million traded average daily trading volume. So what does it mean? Well, it means that we are obviously below the 10% hurdle. So why should I trade it? Um, if I make a good trade based on that, it's for this and that reason, I use this as a, as a um, um, in this case, um, 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 a tool how to, 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 to not prepare my trading. What's the word after that? Review and, and, and tweak my trading accordingly. If I made a bad trade, um, well, then obviously it was potentially because the stock wasn't as hot as it needed to be, let's put it that way. So, but coming back here, there's another important number. So you have the pre-market volume now, but what is this? I mean, wh why do I know that there's an average daily trading volume here of 14.45 million? Where do I get these numbers from? And there is another source um, I highly recommend checking out. This is Finwiz. And um, let's go let, Let's go to Finwiz first. 
And then here, I also share the, the link in the chat box. And then we type in the ticker symbol. It's NFLX in this case, so Netflix. And here you have plenty of information around um, the stock itself. For example, the average volume, which is traded per day. So how much volume is done? And it's 14.57 million. In fact, so I used the numbers from the morning. So it was from yesterday. I had to update, oh, I have to update this. It's only slightly, but, but still. Um, it's five, seven, then four, five. <clears throat> and you can see here, so this number is also a number which is completely free. So you only need to, to find um, um, the, the, let's say key parameters to make a stock hot in this case, and then taking it from there. So you see 14.57 um, um, 14 million. So you see, this is the average daily trading volume. Then you have also market watch with the pre-market screen. By the way, you can also here open a new top and see by the way, here, the average daily trading volume also here. Um, in fact, it's 14.36, depends a little on, on where do you get the data from, which stock exchanges you're probably cutting out, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's within the range here you can work with, but I prefer FinWiz for several other reasons um, because there's more data here you can find on the website. This is especially true, has been especially true. Um, and in the past, when looking here at the short percentage respectively, I also have to here get a, I'm sorry, get an institutional ownership top. Um, in the past, you've probably seen so-called short squeezes, especially in meme stocks. Um, and these were um, um, happening due to the fact that um, there was a high short float in the stock, which can also be found for free here on Finware. So I mean, this is where the short float comes into play. So. 2.87, we don't need, it's non-existent. So this is a, this is a big tech stock, non, um, um, nothing, nothing to worry about, but an information I still collect. Let's have a look at AMC, for example, just for, for illustration purposes. Oh, it's not even, <laughs> this is nice. So they don't even uh, they, um, um, display it here anymore. Do we have GME? There we go. So GME GameStop, it's 20%. So 20% of the um, outstanding shares are short. Um, so short float, which means if we now get to see some kind of, let's say, bullish breakout here, sustainable move, and market participants are now being forced to cover their shorts, that could be um, that could result in a short squeeze because the higher the short float, the higher the need to get somewhere the shares, which could push the price higher, which is an important information if we plan to play um, a stock like GameStop from the short side because it could um, um, result here in some, some whippy price action, let's say. And then it's something which is not really um, 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 attractive to, to play from the short side then, in fact. But in case of Netflix, um, I get also here the information. I have also an idea on the institutional ownership. This is something which is also interesting because, well, it's 80% institutional ownership. And now you're an institutional trader. You're looking at these numbers. You see, let's say, well, they are they are reporting numbers which are better than expected in terms of the streaming paid net change for the current quarter, or let's, let's say the last quarter, but the upcoming quarter, I don't like this at all. Um, so this doesn't look like a growth story anymore. What does this mean? Well, as an institutional player, you're probably about to say, okay, well, we get to see the gap now out of this range. Probably we see some squeeze, but I try to reduce my exposure, which is then, bringing us to the point where um, formulating a game, a game plan or a trade hypo hypothesis came into play for me. So now I say, well, I have a number right now. It's um, considered to be positive. Well, great. Um, and then I see the gap out of this range on the upside, also positive. Um, so now the question is, is this a sustainable break? So because the numbers looking mixed all in all, so it doesn't really look like um, the growth um, 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 will continue or will come back um, um, rather sooner than later, but it's more like right now, number we were very beaten down on the stock, but all in all, well, this looks mixed. Um, so which means I want to see now if we can hold this gap. So when you're opening, let's say around 210 here on the upside, let's just zoom into the chart a little. So, and probably go down to the 30 minute chart. So we're gapping out of this range on the upside um, and somehow here, somewhere around 205, we, we have a resistance of this range probably here. So on the upside, 207, 208, so here around. Um, so the question we have now is, let me just 
here, type in 205. Um, can we hold this gap? So if we were opening now above this range, um, do we get to see players, market participants coming in, holding the market above that level? Yes or no? Um, if yes, if we can hold that gap, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to be long for a day, by the way. So we will see um, on how to formulate a game plan in a few seconds. Um, but you don't necessarily um, um, want to be short the stock if we can hold this gap. If we can hold it, if we see a gap out of this range after the earnings release and gapping or coming down into the range, I think then there's an elevated chance that we're probably going down to the, to the low part of the range, or at least in the lower um, quartile of this range, somewhere in the range between 160 to, to 170, somehow that, some, somewhere in that. Um, but this is the play then for the days to come. Right now, the question is, can we hold the gap based on the support levels, which I formulated already here, 210 and 207. So what you've by the way seen now is, and look at your, at, your, at your watch, you can see there's no trading taking place right now. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is because the liquidity providers Atmos is using here are saying, well, we first of all want to wait for the first five minutes here to see until the dust has settled. So very elevated um, 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 volatility. We see um, some, let's call them liquidity issues due to imbalances in the order book. Um, and as a, as a liquidity provider who needs to hatch his exposure, this is a very difficult um, environment, in fact, and thus they skip the first five minutes of trading, which is no big deal for us because um, um, I prefer to really focus on the trading after the um, um, first 10, 50 minutes sometimes. Um, I'm given then a first idea, having a first idea on where the market is currently playing the stock. Therefore, um, if we want to see already now the price action, well, we can already have a look here. Oh, that does not good. That's not good looking good. So we flushing lower. Obviously, right in the first three minutes here now, you can see that. So we are, we are this this is the, the higher end of the range. Okay, so 203. So we, we need to hold this, this gap. Um, we really need to hold above 205. So right now, I mean, it's not that that we that we lost it or something, but as you can see here, Netflix is now um even for the day. So there's no gap anymore. So we, we close the gap within the first minutes of trading. Um, and now the question, in fact, comes into play. Well, how do we um, um, behave now? Can we can we see buyers coming in, stepping in again? And then here, the volume weighted average price comes into play because I don't want to be long the stock anymore um, as long as we trade below this volume weighted average price. This is my 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 my. Um, um, identification line for the advantage. Let's let's put it that way. Um, and based on that, I formulated a game plan. I already formulated it. You can see it here. So you can see first. Uh, it's usually three three um 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 uh, game plans. In fact, the third one I skipped it because it's like um we are not trading above WeWeb and we're closing the gap. Respectively, we are trading back into the range. And the, the moment is um there that I just don't want to be long the stock anymore. You can also write it down for sure. But um in our case, we really focus now on the first scenario, not the second one, where we have the opening drive above 219. So 219, when I formulated this in the morning, I formulated because um, that was the, the, the um, um, high here, the resistance after the earnings, which um, wasn't taken out. So if we see an opening drive above that, you wanna be long because then you're aiming for 225. But this is obviously a scenario which is not playing um, out right now, but in fact, we are dropping. And we see this, let's call it, um, let's, let's call it a flash scenario, probably. So we are flushing lower, we are flush into the open, but we rebit to 10, respectively 207. So right now, we are focusing here on 207 on the downside. Um, and then I want to see, in addition to holding this support on the downside, 207 right now, I want to see um, Netflix, the stock, reclaiming WeWeb. Volume weighted average price. I want to see it rebidding above that level, recapturing that level. And then I could imagine that we're probably going as high as 215, probably 219 on the upside. Um, so this is the scenario. I'm now game planning in my in my head and I'm visualizing what I want to see. And then I say, okay, um, with a stop, which level I risk against? Well, I want to see recapturing and holding WeWap. So the volume weighted average price. Which means if I have in this case, coming back here now to the platform, if I if I now see market, in fact, it's trading below 207. In fact, um, if we rebid here, willing with an average price in the upcoming minutes and hold above that level. And 
here, then also in combination with that, holding above 207, um, I'm willing to, to take long trades, but I'm having a quite tight stop, something like, yeah, 105. So I'm, I'm 150, not 105. Um, um, here I have a stop below below WeWeb in this case. The max I want to have is in fact, and this is the last column you can see here, um, is a stop which is 20% of my average true range. So if we have an ATR, um, I'm here, you wonder which ATR we are looking at. So the average true range, we had already several webinars on that, by the way. Um, you can find the recordings in the YouTube channel here from, from um, Admirals. And um, so the average true range tells you about the volatility in a stock. And I look at the ATR in this case for the last 22 trading days. So uh, I want to know for one month, what was the average trading range within the stock? And in case of um, Netflix, it's around $10, 10 dollars 44 here in this case. 20%, it's around... Um, um, two dollars. That means the max risk I'm willing to take on a trade, um, and I'm placing then below the um, um, volume weighted average price is two dollars below that. So if we now have a volume weighted average price which is around two o o six, you can see that there, um, and we are rebidding that level and holding two o six, then my max stop level will be below somewhere around two o four on that level. Um, and then from there, um, we are going for a push up to 215, probably 219. But, and this is the thing, we need to see recapturing and then the stock, the bulls recapturing WeWeb. If we don't do that, if we, if we hope below that level, well, then you're just not interested in the stock anymore. Um, and by the way, um, so now we also wanna, wanna, wanna give some, 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 some insights into the statistics here. Uh, and therefore, I'd like to, to, to show you some um, um, clicks. I'm sorry, here we have it. Um, I, wanna, I wanna show you some, some tweets from my end yesterday. Um, so here were the earnings. The, the, this was already um, tweeted on, um, on Saturday last week. But yesterday in the evening, I also here um, shared the earnings itself. And then I came across the following um, last earnings releases and the reaction in the stock. So giving it some statistics and to be capable to, to formulate an overall um, advantage. So statistically speaking. And then um, what could we, what, what we got to see is in fact, that um, only once over the last 10 releases, only once, and it was in January 21, that was the inauguration day of Joe Biden back then, by the way, um, we only see once a gap higher so today we, we get higher, nearly 4% in this case. You can see here the last 10 releases, only once we, we get higher. And we were holding this gap then only once, um, even though the overall bullishness and, and with, with um, um, having back then the all-time highs in sight, around 600 around, that was the level. By the way, I was, I was watching that back then. I, I also have a, a trade from January 21 in Netflix here. So that's why I remember that quite well. Um, but you can see, usually, um, even if there was a beat, respectively, if you have a raised guidance, and in this case, that was a raised guidance, um, but also here you had a raised guidance that was in... Um, Q4, uh, no, sorry, a Q1, Q1 for a 20. That was the COVID pandemic, even though it's a special environment. Um, usually you don't have a bullish reaction to that. Um, if you have, well, there's an increased likelihood that uh, this, this, this initial pop higher will be held, but it's, it's not a given. And that being said, um, is something to keep in mind when formulating a too bullish bias on a stock, especially now with the stock having, having already gone down um, and to close the gap. So now we can obviously also have a look here on, um, 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 on, the, on the MetaTrader because now after the first five minutes of trading, we now have a chance to, to, to give it a, um, um, a deeper look here. And you can see the, the gap is nearly closed. In fact, um, we are already back into the range so as you can see here, um, we weren't really capable of, of opening outside of the range. You don't really see the gap anymore. You only see it once you look in the pre-market and we are trading back into the range. So it looks as if we have really trouble to find buyers in the stock pushing the price higher, which means the bullish bias I have here in the stock is then in fact done for the day. So it, it could be, and, and chances increase right now um, that I'm not having a trade today, at, lo at, at least not as long as we trade below the volume weighted average price. If you, if you don't see um, um, the, 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 the WeWeb being, 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 being rebid, 
we capture you I, at least i it's not you but I don't want to be long the stock because um, this, um, um, yeah, this, 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 this impulse, let's call it, this um, less than um, um, expected or better than expected in this case, better than expected um, 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 number in terms of streaming paid net change is only um, a first potential bullish catalyst, which is already sold off because now market participants are looking, reading between the lines and saying, well, that doesn't look that promising anymore. Um, and so do, why do I why do I really want to be long the stock, despite speculating that probably we see um, a sharper bounce um, or a higher push after we break out of this consolidation, which we um, which we which we which we can um, 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 uh, spot here in the um, daily chart, respectively, also in the hourly chart. So that being said, um, um, in fact, leaves us um, at, a, at a small summary. What to look at? In fact, trading-wise, unfortunately, I have to say that this is this is kind of, of, of kind of frustrating. Well, let's see. Well, probably probably we we'll make it back above two or six. I'm not really sure whether um, it will be enough time here then to to, to cover trade, um, but it doesn't look that promising. You just don't want to be long a stock, which is which is obviously sold right from the open. Uh, so, um, um, and you want to you want to you want to see a buyer stepping in and, and clear demand taking place if you have a bullish BS and then taking it from there and not just now hoping that we make a higher low and then probably breaking bug with a blue up, but, but you really want to see now push back above that level else um, this initial impulse here and now close of the gap and turning red for the day. Um, this is not something positive, in fact. So some some people might probably also more aggressive um, 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 traders in this case might probably also take this as an um, as a signal that we probably want to want to short the stock here um, after this this um, 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 flush back into the um, into the trading range. But coming back to the to the to the summary then. So first of all, what you want to do is um, you want to get an overview on which earnings will be released. In addition to that. Um, sometimes, as you might have seen over the last weeks, if there's no earnings, but there's still potential candidates to, to then trade, um, you want to see which stocks are hot. How to um, spot a stock which is hot? Well, therefore, you first of all head over here to the pre-market screener, and then you check for the leaders and you check for the laggards. So if you then see a stock which has an elevated volume being traded in the pre-market. So here, by the way, you, you really can't spot this. Um, there you have Netflix. You can see 2 million, share, 2 million shares being traded. Sure, obviously market participants are watching this because it released earnings. But else, um, last year, for example, I remember a time that was in, I think it was in July. It's around the one year ago. It was in June, I think. June, July, I'm not sure. Um, there was some number, um, um, uh, there was some um, um, news around um, space, so Virgin Galactic. Um, going into space, and there was a sharp squeeze on the upside, um, and uh, the, the stock was massively traded in the pre-market. The same could be seen with meme stock like MC Jimmy. You saw very elevated pre-market volume, and um, that being said, then leaves us that there's obviously a certain interest in the stock. But to really be sure that there's a certain interest, it's just not enough to look at the chart and say, well, there's a trend line, or there's a breakout to new yearly highs, or new monthly lows, or whatever, but it's really important that you have this breakout, this technical pattern you spot, um, have it um, 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 supported with a, a clear, clean increase in volume, that market participants are showing their hand and saying, yes, I'm interested in this breakout, else it's not worth your time, because it's, it's just... Um, 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 yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not really showing that, that, that this is a sustainable move. Let, let it be on the upside, let it be on the downside. So pre-market volume is key. So, but pre-market volume is not pre-market volume. Um, if you now have a market here with 2 million shares being traded, well, this is most of the time of interest, but let's, for example, have a look at um, a, a NEO, for example. I don't have NEO here. Do we have it? Let's see. Now, so Neo, you can you can consider Neo being a competitor from Tesla um, in the Chinese market. Neo is a very liquid stock um, and usually sees elevated volume in the pre-market um, um, too. Not only in, in the in the market itself. Same is also true, but probably we can we can skip Neo. Let's let's have a look here at AMD. So you say, well, look at this. This is eight hundred thousand pieces being traded in the pre-market. Well, this this looks elevated. 
Yes, but if you now here look at what's usually going on in the stock with an average volume of 105 million shares being traded. And by the way, you can also here, for example, check this um, on a website, it's called a bar chart, the volume leaders. You will see that um, a stock like AMD is usually appearing here. Oh, this is now, well, this is bad because um, um, this, is, this is bad because it's now updated in real time, in fact, or at least with a, no, it's updated in real time, in fact. So with the volume data, which is great, by the way, I can also share you, sh share this, this link here. So you get an overview on um, um, how much volume is traded here. And as you can see, um, there's also the NEO here, for example, you see 1 million shares now being traded after 15 minutes of trading. Um, but the thing is, if you have an average volume in this stock here, um, and let's go back to AMD in this case of over 100 million shares, 1 million is not that much, it's only 1%. So what you wanna have in percentage terms or in ratio terms, you wanna have 10% of the, the average daily trading volume being traded in the pre-market already to support your view that the stock is hot for the day. Um, and then you look for the potential um, um, news event, which took place. You already have an overview, but you really do not know whether it's an earnings release or something else. Like, I don't know, in the past, the news on Nancy Pelosi's husband buying NVIDIA stock or something like that, based on a, on a bill in terms of um, um, subsiding the, the chip industry, whatever the reason might be. Um, you let the price, respectively the volume, talk to you. And if it's increased, well, then breaks are more sustainable. Um, if it's um, if you see this break happening under increased volume and if there's no volume taking place, because then it's only you seeing that potential pattern, but not enough market participants to make it a sustainable move. So if you have this data, then I'd say have a look at the gap which occurs, even if you have, let's say, increased volume, but there's no real gap taking place. This is also something uh, you should be aware of. You want to see a gap hopefully to a new technical relevant level to new 52 day highs or um, um, a week, I'm sorry, 52 week highs or lows or whatever. Um, and, 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 and see a clear break, breakout on elevated volume, which increases the likelihood that this is a sale move, which will track the attention or um, 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 catch the attention of more market participants um, than heading or FOMOing the stock and driving it further in direction of the breakout. Um, Average daily trading volume, pre-market volume to keep components to decide whether the stock is hot or not. The ATR, very important in terms of how much potential do I have on the upside, respectively on the downside in terms of um, um, after a certain move happened and also to, to calculate my risk. And then short percentage, very important when it comes to sometimes low fold stocks, but probably also meme stocks. Um, um, in general, if you if you have a look here um, at, a, at a stock which has an elevated short float, um, then usually it's a sign that um, it, it's a candidate for a squeeze higher. Um, and sometimes you should be careful once you short the stock. Um, because the, the price action on the short side could be some kind of, let's say, whippy or, or choppy in this case. And then you want to also know the institutional ownership. So potentially market participants saying, well, you know what, um, I'm buying or I'm long in the case of, of, of Netflix, over 80% of market participants is institutional owners. I'm long the stock, which is, which is cool, but there's a problem um, because obviously the growth story is over. This is now interesting. So we are, we are flushing lower, but now... We can hold 200 in this case, also obviously um, an important level, but this is still not enough. We, we, we still need conviction that we make it back above the um, um, volume weighted average price. It's, first of all, it's a, it's, a, it's a sign, let's put it that way. So no follow through on the downside, no push back below 200. Let's see if we can make it back above the volume weighted average price. Probably reclaiming 207, um, we see a pop, Retest of, of um, 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 in this case, WeWeb, in this case, around, around 205. And then if we can hold, then probably it's a long candidate, at least with a reduced position size, um, um, given the overall not so bright picture after um, the gap higher. Because, well, if you have a strong stock, if you have demand, the gap is hold. Um, 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 or can be hold um, in this case. So it's, it's um, usually don't see a gap fill in a strong stock or in a strong market in general. Um, and then, then we, we, we try to take it from there. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, let's have a look here on, on Micron. Um, so semiconductor, semiconductors in general, um, I'm not really sure when they deliver earnings. I think it will be uh, 
the end of the quarter because they just released earnings and they weren't that promising. So it's MU. Let's have a look here. Let's open. Click. Let's open here. It's also, um, we, we didn't have now enough time to, to cover the overall market, but certainly it's also important to have a look here at, um, uh, to have a look at what the overall market is doing. So in case of the, of the spider, we are about to break higher, this trend line, so changing character. So the overall bearishness, the bear market, um, at least the structure is potentially broken here. So this is definitely something to, 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 to keep an eye on. And this is also something which could then make, if the, the gap can be hold off now the flush out and, and so on and so forth, but which is not the case anymore, but which could also lift um, um, Netflix in this case. The same is especially probably true for um, 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 the queues, which have already broken this, this downtrend here. But there's a question on, on Micron. Let's, let's have a look here. Okay, that's okay. What, what's what's certainly promising? Let, let's have a look here. Um, let's go down to a thirty-minute chart. Looks a little extended, but it's it's a breakout. It's I mean, obviously, as you can see here, um, it's holding this this breakout region around sixty. So um, got crushed, obviously, over the last months, respectively, especially here with an acceleration um, um, from June onwards, got crushed, then is bought back up, bringing us back above 60, holding 60. This is not so bad. It's um, kind of a positive sign, I'd say. Um, could you imagine that's probably um, opening the door if we, if we can hold um, um, 60 again, and if the overall market um, continues to, um, to brighten, especially if the um, a spider um, and if the queues continue to rise higher due to, let's say, a fat which comes in more dovish than expected. This is potentially a reason then um, um, to, to expect Micron to pro potentially push back up to uh, somewhere here, these, these lows at least, so 65, 66. Um, even though longer term, you don't want to be long the stock as long as we trade below 74, I'd say. Um, even though some market participants who, who shorted the break lower here, um, even though I could imagine that they already started to cover. So um, due to the fact that this break happened here, they get lower um, 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 around two months ago. But if, if they were momentum playing the, the downside here in this case, but I'm um, still, some might probably see first light at the end of the tunnel here. If we make it back above 66, probably 75. This is the level I would watch here if I if I consider Micron for a longer term play, longer term play. Um, yeah, so I hope that this this answers the question. And um, uh, the other contact details from uh, Atmos. If you like to have further information um, on the offering, check out their offering on the website atmosmarkets.com respectively. Also check out um, uh, check out their. Um, 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 contact details here, write them an email or check out the YouTube channel, by the way, if you know, like what you witnessed then leave a thumb up here, um, leave a comment in the chat box below, which assets you want to see us covered in the, in the future. If you, if you liked this, this format in general, um, if you want to want to get more of this in the, in the future. And, um, so this is the risk disclaimer. I, um, already guided you through, um, with my words at the beginning, but read it carefully once again. So all the content provided has, or is for educational purposes only. Don't uh, copy paste um, any of, of the trading ideas which I have um, formulated here, if I formulated any. And um, so that's it from my end. So all the best, happy trading. See you next time. I look forward to it. Bye-bye.